Hi everybody, this is Patrick back from the 8tracktapestore.com. So once we have found the splice, it's time to assess the condition of it and probably change it. Um, almost every splice we encounter on a, a cartridge needs to be replaced. It's not 100% true, but it's almost always true. Um, a rule of thumb is when in doubt, uh, replace the splice. Um, there's certain conditions we look for, and I'll show you examples in a second. Um, you want to make sure the uh, if you're going to keep a splice that it's shiny, meaning it, it will still conduce electricity well. Um, you don't want it to be dirty, um, and you don't want it to be worn. So nice and shiny, looking like new. Um, you don't want to have a crease in the center of it. Uh, a crease in the center of it uh, that's noticeable can lead to double uh, skips. Um, in other words, you uh, skip from track one to track three. Um, another thing is you want it to be proper length. Uh, we like about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Uh, half an inch is, is the low end. I would say two thirds of an inch to three quarters of an inch. Um, if we see anything smaller than half an inch, that needs to be replaced because uh, on a lot of players that just won't change at all. Um, if it's too long, uh, I've, we've seen um, track changing splices of an inch and a half or two inches. Anything over three quarters of an inch we want to cut out because that can lead to double uh, skipping as well. And if it was changed um, before by someone and they did it wrong, we want to replace that um, splice. An example would be um, the splice is too too long, or someone put scotch tape on the back of it thinking it would make it stronger. Um, don't do that, please. Um, so let's look at some examples. Um, here's a tape that we uh, found the splice in the last video. Um, you can see that there's a crease in the middle. It's looking pretty bad. Um, and so we're going to, and we can also just peel it straight off, which is another one of the tests. Um, you can have a perfectly looking, good looking splice, but if you can peel off or just even barely catch an edge with your fingernail, it's time to go. So that splice, uh, this uh, splice is ready to be replaced. I'm going to set that aside. We'll work on that in a minute. Uh, we're going to look at another example. This is a splice here. This one's really worn. Now the glue's good. It's not going to peel off, but it's worn. And so what we're going to do is cut this splice out now with our sharp scissors. We like to do this at an angle. Now if you can peel it off, great. That's better than cutting tape. But um, we're going to cut this at an angle, maybe a 60 degree angle on both sides of the splice, like that. And uh, this one's ready to replace. So we'll set this aside. We'll look at another example. This one here. This one has a nice shiny splice. It's all beautifully adhered to the tape, but there's this big gap in the middle here. Um, and that's going to lead to a double splice in our experience on some tape drives. And so this one, unfortunately, even though it's a beautiful looking splice, is going to have to come out. We're going to cut that out. Same way, 60 degree angles, like so. Um, and we'll set that aside. Now let's show you, let's show you an example of a good splice. These are rare. We replace most of them. But uh, somewhere in here, if I can find it, there it is. This is a good splice. It's shiny. It's clean. You can't catch a fingernail on the edge to pry it up, so the glue's still good on it. There's no reason to replace this splice. It's been in place a long time, and it's ready to uh, do more work for you. So we'll just leave that one alone. But again, those are uh, unusual. Um... That is it. Let's replace the splice now. So uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to take this blue one 
And we're going to leave the uh, twists in the, car, in, the, in the tape that were already on there when we cut the splice. Um, this needs ironed a little bit, so we're just going to do that real quick. Iron always on the lowest setting. This is number one, without steam. Um, so we're going to do it that way. And put one more twist back in there. Now we're ready to replace the splice. And we can do that with a splicing block where we line these up and keep them in a nice straight line. We don't use that. Uh, what we use instead is just a simple uh, 3M sticky pad. You turn it over so that you have the sticky side up. And I'm going to put the, uh, the left end down, my left. And the right end is going to slightly overlap the first part. Um, you don't want to try to line those up exactly together because they, they can edge apart after a while. Um, I have a really good eye for straight lines. Uh, not everybody does. What you can do, um, I follow the line on the top of the card. You can also draw a line with a ruler. You do want to make sure these are very straight. If they're not, then uh, as the tape winds around uh, the spool, you're going to have stress uh, marks in here because the tape will attempt to straighten out itself if it's not straight. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a uh, splicing material. They sell them in rolls like this. We mentioned that in the uh, one of the earlier videos. Um, and you can buy small amounts on um, that are pre-cut like this. Um, we use our own rolls and we uh, cut them ourselves. So I'm going to stretch this out here like that, take my sharp scissors, and I'm going to eyeball about uh, two-thirds or so. Let's pull that out a little more. I'm going to eyeball about two-thirds of an inch to three-quarters. Something like that is about right. Uh, it doesn't need to be exact, but you don't want it too long or too short. I'm going to take my tweezers. And I'm just going to lay this on manually. You keep the um, splice between <laughs> the edges of the tape, like that. When you have it in place, you can press it down, like so. And then I'm going to peel this off from the 3M pad. And we have a good splice. Um, there's a little more work to do. We'll flatten that out. So in the course of working on it, you can kind of uh, smudge up the tape a bit. Um, so we're going to use the iron on here really briefly. Again, this is on setting number one. And we're just going to do that just a little bit. And that'll warm up the glue and make it a little bit nicer to spread around in there. And it'll also flatten out any little uh, micro wrinkles that you might have added. Um, when that's done, I'm going to take these uh, loops here. We're going to put them back on the tape. If I can, just like that. There's going to be more work to do in this tape. I don't like the way the hub is turning. It's got a little resistance. So uh, what I might do right now is add a spacer. Uh, I'll show you why in another video. But a spacer is going to fix that problem. This will now turn very nicely. You don't need oil or uh, graphite powder. Oh yeah, much better. So that's going to be um, a splice that we have fixed. We will put the, uh, the cover on it later. Now here's another example. I'm just going to do the same thing so you'll be seeing it twice. Um, this one we peeled the um, uh, the splice off, you'll remember. I'm going to shave the ends here so that they're at an angle. There's one. Here's two. About a 60 degree angle. We're going to keep the two loops that we have already in there. And we're going to do the same thing. You can reuse these 3M pads a number of times until they get too dirty or the glue wears off. So I'm going to line that up on top. Nice semi straight line. Continue here, straight line, and that is pretty straight. And we're going to do the same thing, two-thirds to three-quarters of an inch, cut in an angle, and we're going to put it in here. 
All right, the reason we cut these splices at an angle is there's a, the feeling that, um, you know, as it encounters uh, the edges in, of the parts inside the cartridge, that, and especially the playhead in the player, and it's probably better to start with a point rather than the entire edge, because uh, that's kind of a, it's a little ledge, a hump to get over. Uh, so that's why we cut them at angles. I'm gonna peel that off, straighten it out. And iron for the same reason, to spread that glue around and flatten everything out. Um, this could use a little ironing here. This could also use a little cleaning right here. So we can do that right now. Uh, actually, I don't have my cleaning solution ready to go. But we'll do that in another video. This is often a problem with glue here. One turn away from the splice because it's uh, gotten gunk from the uh, top of the of the. Uh, of the foil splice. But anyway, that, once we clean it, we'll loop that back around and close it just like the first one. And then lastly, I want to show you an example of what tape does on the back of the splice. Some people do this. It uh, drives us mad in the, sh in the shop. Um, this is a splice that looks great, but the problem is the person who uh, spliced this last time put a bunch of not a bunch, put a, a stretch of tape on the back, about one inch. And that turns the splice from being the like the weakest point in the tape, which is what you want, to the strongest point. And because it's the strongest point, um, this starts stretching out around here and has created a bunch of stretch marks. This needs to be ironed. You might see that better from the back. So when you put tape on the back of a splice, it's going to end up damaging the tape around the splice. Um, it's not a good thing, and it's totally not necessary. You want the splice to be the weakest part of your tape so that it separates there when there's a problem. Anyway, I hope this was an enjoyable uh, video. This is Patrick from the 8-Track Tape Store. So we have some feedback from our peer reviewers on this video. Uh, the first is that when you're uh, trimming tape like this at about a 60-degree angle, you want to make sure that you're not leaving any sticky uh, glue deposits here. Um, those can be cleaned off with a uh, Q-tip or um, where's a Q-tip? All right, there's my prop. Or uh, you can just trim all of the glue off. So it might take a little more of the tape off, but it's usually not much. So we're going to trim it like that. And we're going to make sure we don't need leave any glue with whatever method uh, we're using to take that glue off. Um, second thing is, um, I didn't emphasize this enough, but this is important. When you are uh, overlapping your tape for a splice change, um, the left side goes down first. This is my left. And the right side is the tape that's going to overlap uh, the left side just about a quarter of an inch so like that when we make our straight line that's important because uh, the tape will travel this way through the spool and uh, the back will encounter you know various obstacles as it's going through the the routing mechanisms inside the cartridge so you want uh, it to be left side down first right side slightly overlapping um, another thing I want to mention is uh, the splicing material itself. We talked about that. It's really important, uh, no matter where you buy your splicing materials, that you're looking for new old stock, it's called. New old stock is, you know, years and decades old uh, materials that were designed for the 8-track tape world. Now, I'll tell you right now, if you Google, uh, if you go into Amazon and you look for 8-track tape um, foil changing splices, you're going to get this stuff. This is uh, the TME brand. It's uh, marketed for 8-track tapes, but it's actually too thick. This is not good splicing uh, uh, foil for 8-track tapes. You want your splicing material to be as thin as possible so that when it routes around uh, the inside of the cartridge that it encounters as little resistance as possible. Um, so, uh, you know, this, 
This is new old stock material from uh, one of the sources on the internet. This is back splicing material. It's all new old stock. And that's what you want to look for uh, no matter where you buy it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Patrick from the 8 Tape Store.